Hello and welcome back to the channel. This time we are going to discuss literature and thematic analysis. This is Dr. Edward Padama and before we start, please support the channel by clicking the subscribe button and the notification bell to alert you when a new video is uploaded. So let's start! So our discussion will be divided into two parts and these are Introduction to Literature and Thematic Analysis. So under Introduction to Literature, we have the following topics. Etymology of Literature, Functions of Literature, Literary Genres, and Subgenres. And then under Thematic Analysis, we have Elements of Literary Criticism. So to start off, etymology by definition is the study of the origin of words and the way in which their meaning have changed throughout history. Another definition is the origin of a word and the historical development of its meaning. Etymology of literature. So we have already defined the meaning of etymology on the previous slide and this time since we are looking for the origin of the word literature by definition literature is written works especially those considered superior or lasting artistic merit and examples of these are books and writings published on a particular subject other examples include leaflets and printed material used to advertise products or give advice. So literature is generically defined as any body of written works referring to all accounts, specifically defined as written works usually by expert authors that are superior and lasting merit, like published books and periodicals. So the word written uh, appears from time to time in the definition that we have presented. This does not mean that when you start writing, whether in your notes or in your journal or diary, this is already considered literature according to the classification that we have read in the definition. So there are different classifications of literature. But originally, the meaning of the word literature is letters. So when you write and compose your ideas using these groups of letters, this is already considered as a form of literature. Another definition is, etymology of literature is, the word literature came from the Latin word litera, meaning letter or handwriting, that was used to record all events and accounts. So this is what we were discussing earlier. So if you combine these letters to form your idea, this is already classified as a form of literature. Okay, functions of literature. So literature serves as an avenue or an outlet to express one's emotion, feelings, or ideas. Another function is that it serves as a reflection or mirror of one's set of beliefs, culture, and traditions. And then it serves as a record of one's thought and experiences, accessible to others. It also serves as a unique identification of one's origin. Okay, so the next topic is literary genre. Genre refers to types or classifications, and we have five types of classifications. Fiction, non-fiction, folk tales, drama, and poetry. So again, I repeat that genre refers to a category or type of literature. And again, there are five main literary genres. So let's start with the first one. Fiction. This is a literary work that is in the form of a prose, ordinary form, especially short stories and novel that describes imaginary or fictitious events and people. Second one is nonfiction. This is the opposite of fiction, a literary work that is based on facts, truth, real events, and real people. The third is folktale, a story originating in popular culture or pop culture, typically passed on by word of mouth. Next, drama is a theater play presented by a character in the story. And the last one is poetry. It's a literary work 
where intensity is given to the expression of feelings and ideas by use of distinctively style and rhythm. After presenting the five main genres of literature, these are now the subgenres of each main category. So you have under fiction, you have fantasy, folklore, romance, science fiction, historical, and fiction. And then under nonfiction, you have biography, autobiography, narrative, and periodicals. Under folktale, you have fable, myth, fairy tale, legend, and tall tale. And under drama, you have comedy, tragedy, play, skits, musical. Under poetry, you have lyric and dramatic. The second part of our discussion is elements of literary criticism. So the main question is, why do we need to criticize literary works? The main purpose of criticism is to find value in one's work. The critic's specific purpose is to make value judgment on a particular literary work, to explain their interpretation of the work, and to provide the readers with relevant historical or biographical information. The critic's general purpose in most cases is to enrich the reader's understanding of the literary work. So this is why we dwell into criticism of a literary piece in order to find the value and relevance of this information to our daily lives. So the elements of literary criticism are as follows. Number one, you have character, theme, plot, setting, and conflict. So the first element in our literary criticism is the character, and there are two main classifications of a character, and these are the protagonist and the antagonist. The protagonist refers to the hero of the story, and the antagonist is the one antagonizing the hero or the villain as we call them in the literary piece. So a character may refer to any of the following. So the first one is a person in a work of fiction. And again, we have two types. The center figure in the story is called the protagonist. And the antagonist is the character opposite of the main character, which is the villain. <clears throat> the characteristics of a person are the following. So when we criticize the character, we try to look and observe the physical appearance of that particular character. So observe the appearance of the protagonist and the antagonist. And you can see the difference between the two in order to identify their role in the literary piece. What the characters think, feels, and dreams. So in order to relate uh, your experiences with the character, you try to divulge deeper into the character not only by their appearance but also the way they think the way they what they feel and their dreams what the character does or does not do and then what others say about the characters the characteristics of a character are divided into three types we have the individual developing and the static type of character The next element in literary criticism is the theme. So the theme is what the story teaches the readers, the life lesson meaning, moral, values, or message about life or human nature that is communicated by a literary work. So a theme is defined as the subject of a writing or a person's thought on a topic. An idea that records or even pervades a literary work and gives a particular ambience of the story. So, if you are going to relate this to a theme of a birthday party or a wedding, uh, you might say that this sets the mood of a particular um, gathering. Okay. In this case, in a literary work, the theme sets the mood for a particular story. Okay. To identify the theme, one observes and analyzes the title. So usually the title 
is directly relevant to the content or the theme of the story. Second, notice the repeating patterns and symbols within the story. Third, take note of the details and particulars of the story that gives greater meaning. And then we have examples of this theme used in various types of literary genres and these are honesty, perseverance, survival, friendship, love and friendship, person versus nature, courage, good versus evil, and family. And the next element in our literary criticism is the plot. The plot refers to the sequence of events. Even if you can see five points in this plot, exposition, rising action, climax, falling, action, and resolution, there are basically three main points of this plot. You have the beginning, which is the exposition, and then the highest uh, part of the literary uh, plot, which is climax, and then you have the resolution. So, plot refers to the causal sequence of events and the elements of these are, we are only going to discuss the main three, exposition, which is the information needed to understand the story. You have the climax, which is the turning point in the story that occurs when characters resolve the complication, and the resolution, the events that brings the story to a close. Okay, the next element is setting. So setting is generally the time and place of a specific scene or chapter of a story, a play, or a narrative point. Setting can also include the mood of the time period or situation or event. So this is the location of a story's action along with the time in which it occurred. The conditions of settings are the place, the time, the weather condition, social condition. There are five parts of a setting. So you have the place, time, mood, weather, and social. And then second to the last element, we have conflict. So conflict in literature can take the form of the following. And then it is defined as the essence of the story. And it can be identified in human versus human, human versus nature, human versus society, human versus self. And these are some of the examples and uh, definitions of this conflict. Man versus self, the main character has an inner conflict. Man versus nature, some force of nature is causing problems for man or the character. Man versus society, the main character has a problem with a larger group, community, or culture. Man versus man, the main character has a problem with another character. And last but not the least element in literary criticism, we have the resolution. So the resolution signals the end of the story, but before it ends, it should present the following. So the resolution is the part of the plot that concludes or ends the falling action by revealing or suggesting the outcome of the conflict. So the outcome of the conflict should be presented in the resolution before the story ends. The unfolding or solution to a complicated issue in a story, this is also known as the, the denouement. So another term for resolution is denouement. Resolution are usually presented in the final parts or chapters of a story and mostly follows the climax. So this is where we end our discussion on literature and literary criticism. So again, I would like to thank you for joining me in this discussion and please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you will be uh, informed if a new video is uploaded in the channel. So again, thank you and God bless.